Hey guys, Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Washing and Painting. In this video, we're gonna walk through this house start to finish, how we're gonna pressure wash it, soft wash it, that sort of thing, all the concrete. We're gonna go over all the steps that you need to do. So the video is gonna be kind of long, obviously. We're gonna be cutting in and out of the video, showing you step by step how we're gonna do it, how we're gonna apply our sodium hypochlorite, our cleaners, everything from start to finish. So Y'all hang tight, grab a cup of coffee, get you a drink, and we'll be back. All right, guys, first thing first, what we've done, we've backed down this driveway. We've literally been here 45 seconds. Now, when you come down someone's driveway, I don't ever recommend getting on their lawn like we do. Now, we've washed this house many times, and we know that the people that live here have to come and go quite often. And the, the way the driveway is positioned, we would block them in. So we already got permission like i said we know these people very well and we know this property but i don't recommend parking in the grass unless you know otherwise because obviously we're running water there's going to be water down here and we don't want to rut their yard up or worse get stuck so i recommend staying on the driveway but in this situation we do have to put the trailer off into the lawn now that being said first thing we do before we do anything else before we make contact with the owner before we ask them to move vehicles before we move the cat and dog bowls we start feeding our buffer tank with the customer's water faucet so we'll get a lot of questions about that do we use the customer's water faucet and obviously we do so we start feeding our buffer tank obviously these machines right here cannot run off of a water faucet now, if you do have a machine that's gonna run off a water faucet, this you can skip this first step because this is just something we do so we can go ahead and get water going into the buffer tank to get started. So and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do our initial walk around. Me, Apex, and Mr. Jeff, we're gonna do our initial walk around and see what problems we might have with this house. It's been about a year since we've been here, so things may have changed. We're not tasked with cleaning the roof today or soft washing the roof, but we're gonna check it for any debris and get that off of it and the gutters as well so already we know we're going to be moving that furniture we got a door there that we're going to have to be concerned about these shutters have oxidation on it this is an older home so these windows are going to have some leakage if we tend to pressure wash it hard so we know we're going to have to be really gentle around around those windows this uh concrete pad around the ac system is going to be cleaned obviously these windows are bars but the windows are very old so this house is 30 40 years old any water pressure into these window seals will cause them to leak and perhaps it blow a paint out so we don't want to do that also we're looking for any rotten wood we want to take pictures of that if we do see any issues with that nothing really particular it's not all that dirty we're looking at the concrete as well. See if we got any buckling in the concrete, any major cracks is formed. We'll talk about that in a second. This little back patio, same thing. We know we're not gonna put pressure on this light. We're looking for outlets that we may have to cover. Um, talk about buckling concrete. I always like to take pictures of it because I had had a customer tell me one time that we break her concrete. So you might wanna look at that. This is another patio area that we're just gonna glance at. Everything looks pretty simple. We'll be moving this stuff around and cleaning it as well. So back onto this back porch, you may run across this. This is a problem area. A lot of this stuff is gonna have to be shuffled around and moved and cleaned as well. So we're looking at fragile things that's on the wall. That may blow off a lot of that obviously there's a tv so we we'll to be very selective in here what we're doing with our pressure washer or our soft washing wand we got some plants that's going to have to be taken down because so we don't want to dose those with sodium hypochlorite still we're looking for any issues on the house whatsoever just your pre-walk around got a fountain here probably like to have that cleaned up i'm sure another window set and then we got a carport area and now that we've done our initial walk around, we're gonna break away real quick and ask the customer to move the vehicles. And then we're gonna get started and kind of show you some video clips of that. If you like this video so far, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and go check out our website, BillyDavidsonVIP.com. And we'll be back in just a minute. All right, guys, we're back. We made contact with the homeowner. We still fill in our tank. Right now, Apex and Jeff 
is pulling out 200 feet of pressure hose. The reason why we're doing only 200 feet today because we're actually going to downstream this house. There's several ways that you can apply chemicals. You can use a downstream injector. You can use an X-Jet. You can use a 12-volt soft wash pump. Or either you can use something like this beast right here, which is a gas-powered soft wash system. We've elected to downstream because the house doesn't have that much mildew, if any, on it. It's basically pollen and a couple other little mildew spots that we can touch with a brush. The other reason this person that lives here is quite elderly, so we don't want her being sensitive to a massive amount of sodium hypochlorite. That being said, if we were going to clean these shingles, it would be highly likely, given her age, I would ask her caregiver to remove her from the premises while we doing that. So that's something that has to be really well coordinated because these elderly people can't just jump and run like normal. They would have to take her somewhere and we would do that as courtesy because the last thing we want to do is irritate her health or whatever being her age so think about that guys as well also want to mention real quick i'm going to show you a price walk around of this house and go and show you the exact price that we're charging for the uh the house in the concrete and if we were going to do the roof i'm going to show you how i would price this roof now this new video of that will be on billy davidson vip.com in one of our courses called how to soft wash your roof so that's going to be an addition free add-on if you've already joined the course if you haven't joined the course i think it's like 60 bucks you will get this video in there and also the other video on how to wash a shingle roof how to clean a shingle roof how to price it all that'll be in that one video all for 60 bucks so check out the link in the description or either go to billydavisonvip.com All right, guys, so we've stretched our 200 feet of pressure hose from our trailer back on this side all the way over here by Apex and Gel. So what we're going to do, the reason, well, let me tell you this, the reason why we're only using 200 feet, because our downstreamer is not going to want to work on 300 feet. So if you get too much pressure hose on it, your downstreamer injector is going to reduce its draw rate all the way down to zero. Also, forgive the audio. It's really windy. We've got some storms moving in. So he's gonna start applying his SH solution from a downstream injector. We're gonna talk about our solution here in a second. We're gonna walk back to the machine and we're gonna work our way back to the truck. Now you can do it however you want, but I found that that's the best way. Work your way back, stretch everything out and then follow that line back to the trailer. And then at that point, we're gonna shut things down and we're gonna show you something else while, while our sodium hypochlorite dwells. So I'm gonna go walk this away and start the machine. Also, while we're walking, we're still looking. Although we've done our preliminary walk around, we're still eyeballing things, making sure nothing's damaged, nothing's broke. If this needs cleaning, that sort of thing, make a mental notes, that sort of thing. If this something's broke, you wanna document it with a picture. So we're walking back. We know she has some landscaping here. So we're gonna be careful about that. Downstream injecting, not really going to bother that anyway but we're pre-wetted anyway and it's about to rain so now if it's 100 degrees out here and there's no rain in the forecast that's a different story we're going to have to pre-wet that here's our little sh tank we got 12.5 in there since this house is not bad we've got that cut in half so it's actually about six to seven percent sh in there we're going to directly downstream inject it and this is going to be just kind of showing you some raw footage right here. This is my downstream injector. So I'm gonna take our cap off. Usually I have a drop stick, but I got a camera in one hand. Guys, if y'all liking this, leave a like, leave a comment. This is taking some time out of our day, but we wanna show you this so you can learn. So this is my downstream injector. This hose shouldn't be no more than about six or eight feet long. If you try to downstream injector off of 10 feet, then you got the coefficient drag of the hose blocking that downstream injector from drawing. So that way you have a reduced draw rate or no draw rate at all. So it's gonna get loud here. I don't like to run this machine on full power when I'm downstreaming. I feel that we get a little bit better solution draw rate if we run it on less power than full power. And that's gonna be the case with your machine too. So 
I'm gonna run this on probably about 30% of all we need just because this machine's so big. But if you got a smaller machine, you might have to run it a little bit stronger. So here we go. I'm already hearing the downstream injector drawing. Maybe you can hear it. And also, I did check that before I started recording the video, just to make sure my downstream injector is drawing. So we're gonna start it on the idle. Those apex is all the way back down there. Now we're going to idle this up about 30, 40 percent. Now we're going to walk back. Also, we're looking at hose management here as well. We're going to make sure our hose is not tearing into some bushes or grabbing something and flipping it over. Again, I'm still checking. I'll never stop checking. I'm always looking up, looking around. Keep your head on a swivel. Also, we're looking for any hazards out here. You know, maybe something has broken or fallen over. Something simple that we can put back that may mean the world to them. You know, that, that happens at times. So, let's go wide so we don't get hit. And here we go. I can smell that gold already. That smell of liquid gold, Apex. So, again, we're just downstreaming. High to low, kind of hitting a few things. Now this AC system, we know we're gonna get SH on it, so we're gonna rinse that really well. Matter of fact, we're gonna clean it a little bit too. We're gonna to clean the pad, but whenever you're done spraying SH around some of these units, please rinse them off. That's very important because those components could get corroded if you don't rinse properly. So this is basically how we're doing it. Apex is putting a coat on everything. Now watch the way he does his windows, guys. It's real important. Kind of blading it. We're not hitting it direct with pressure. Multiple angles is always important. And that's how you apply SH to a window. So guys, this is basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep spraying this all the way around. When we come to that door set, it's gonna be the same way. We're gonna go quickly over it. And then we'll be back to show you a little bit more. You want to be on YouTube with me? All right, guys, so we're back. We've downstreamed everything, got our solution sitting on it for the last five minutes. I like it to sit for about 10 to 12 minutes. We're an overcast day today. If it's hot and sunny where you're at, then you're going to have to pay more mind to it. Remember, if it's wet, it's still working. So what I mean by that is if your solution on this house is still wet, leave it alone especially if you still got some mold to dissolve and you know you can come by if you see it starting to dry and you still got mold present and this goes with 12 volt any soft washing techniques you can reapply your chemical if it starts to dry you want to reapply your chemical you don't want your chemical to dry on there it can leave residue and the salts in our cleaning solutions can kind of get stuck on there and it'll come off but it might take a little extra work so we don't want our chemical to dry on the house or the windows so we're keeping an eye on it and then we're going to come back and rinse it now this brick right here a lot of times you'll see brick that's really severe mildew the downstream injector is not going to take care of that in this case this is not that bad at all but if you do have brick that's really green along this bottom or red clay stains that's something else you got to deal with now if there's mold and mildew you can come back and apply a stronger solution. If you got a 12 volt system, just dial up your, your solution with your uh, proportional valves, or if you're doing an X-Jet. But I'll tell you what, I found a pump-up sprayer. If you got some hot spots, that's what I call them, that you gotta retreat, you just have your pump-up sprayer. And just come by and hit your spots if you need with a little bit stronger solution. Instead of trying to coat everything with that, strong solution just hit the hot spots with it now to help you out now in this brick we can use a little psi on it uh, this right up here we're going to use 50 or 60 psi on the wood part vinyl whatever you have stucco that's going to be a real soft wash technique on the brick we can go two three four hundred psi on it and kind of remove some of this stuff i don't advise putting anything over about a thousand psi on brick matter of fact i think a thousand might be a little bit too much but in a bad case you know a thousand psi is all you should put on brake myself i tend to keep it well under 500 psi 
So think about that, especially older brick. Um, you can, you know, mess up the mortar joints or remove some of the face of the brick. I've seen guys try to remove this stuff right here. Don't. This is the design in the brick. And some people think that's effervescence. It's not. It's just the brick design. But I have seen it. So you don't want to do that. Soft wash. And look, at five or 600 PSI is not going to remove this anyway. Even a 1,000 PSI probably wouldn't remove it. Even if you went that drastic with your PSI. So five or 600 PSI, you're not going to remove some of this. But you will remove some of the mold and mildew. There could be some stains on it. A lot of times around these boxes, you'll see some stains and stuff. We're not really tasked to clean that. If this is red brick stain, that's a whole nother uh, animal there to, to get rid of that. We'll be talking about that coming up on the YouTube channel. So as this is dwelling, Apex is down here cleaning this concrete with the wand, that sort of thing. We're going to be doing some surface cleaning in the back, so stick around for that. Again, guys, we're going to do a price walk around how to price out one of these jobs from top to bottom, high to low. And we're going to put that on BillyDavidsonVIP.com. So there'll be a link in the description. Just check that out. It'll be in the course of how to soft wash your roof. So we're going to add that to it free of charge. If you're already a member of it, just go check it out and you'll learn how to price out these jobs. If you haven't joined, go ahead and get it. It's only 60 bucks. Again, we're going to show you some more stuff here in a minute. So y'all hang tight. And I've uh, got something interesting to show you around the backside. So guys, we still got our solution dwelling. Apex is circled back around. We're getting ready to rinse. I'm going to show you that, so don't go anywhere. We're just cleaning up this AC pad. Remember, these coils are fragile, so you don't want to put pressure into these coils or anywhere. But we, got, we do want to clean up the pad a little bit. And we also inspect it as well to make sure there's no ants clogging up something. Something we might would have to bring to the attention of the homeowner. So again, he's just doing that pad, and then we're going to start rinsing the house. We're going to kind of show you how to rinse these windows properly. Again, these windows are fragile. And even if they wasn't fragile, we wouldn't want to put a whole bunch of pressure on this at all. No more than about 50 or 60 PSI. So start rinsing. You ready to start rinsing it? So again, we're going to rinse it high to low. We'll start at the top and just start kind of rinsing. You'll see the amount of pressure that we're going to use is very low. Now, this is a J-Rod, and it's rated for eight gallons a minute J-Rod, so it's a real soft flow on it. Now, if you have a four gallon per minute machine, you can also use a J-Rod. You just have to get a, get a J-Rod that is rated for your machine. Also, another good way to rinse if you got a four gallon per minute machine or an eight gallon per minute machine is using an X-Jet adjustable nozzle, the one that opens up as a fan. That's also a good rinse technique as well. You can use a black tip, that sort of thing. Uh, you don't want to rinse with a yellow tip because that's not rinsing. That, that's more of a pressure washing. And it does take this flow of water to release some of this stuff. You can get in here with a pressure washer and it's not a good rinsing technique to use the pressure washing nozzle like a yellow tip. So just a soft rinse. You should also do this with a water hose. You know, you're not going to have much results doing it with your 12 volt system. Rinsing with that because it just doesn't put out the flow or the PSI. So right here, we're probably using about 80 PSI at best. And as you see, it does really good rinsing. And we're going to just walk around the house and rinse everything from high to low, double checking everything. Sometimes you do have to touch up this foundation. So look at that if you have that problem issue going on on the house. Now, if we had gutters here, we would already have debrided the gutters. But in this case, everything's fine on this side. And it's because you want to work high to low. Because you wouldn't want to rinse, get everything washed and rinse, and then figure out you still have something to do above your clean work. So think about that. So guys, if y'all liking it so far, please hit that like button. And we'll show you some more footage here in a minute. All right, guys, we're on the back side of the house now. We've treated the, the house with sodium hypochlorite downstream and just like you see in the front. Just to, trying to cut the video not too, too long, you know, so just kind of showing you some highlights as we go along. As Apex is, we let this do off about 15 minutes now. Apex is going back kind of doing some rinsing and trimming. He's got a J-Rod on there that puts out about five or 600 PSI and we're just doing some trimming inside that little patio area then obviously we're gonna come back and do our surface cleaning here. And I like to do my trim work before I surface clean. It just lets me know, you know, that uh, when I finish surface cleaning, I just go directly to rinsing. So 
That's the way I like to do it. Some some guys do it different. You can service clean, then trim, or you can trim and then service clean. So whatever you'd like to do. So as you see him, he's chasing around where the service cleaner can't get. And if anyone can invent a square service cleaner, hit me up. Because it's a round peg in a square hole type thing. So that's why we got to do our trim work. So yeah, if you can invent a square surface cleaner, cut down on our trimming. Watch my X Apex. Apex! You think you can make me a square surface cleaner to cut down on trim work? Dude, that requires some engineering <laughs> above my head. Above your head? <laughs> so, anyway, I knew I would get them. <laughs> so, we're going to deal with this inside this porch in a little bit. I'm going to show you some footage of that. Because this is going to be probably be something that you're going to deal with now we're going to be cleaning this furniture so we're not trying to pull all this furniture out but we will shuffle it around we're going to do the sidewalk these landscaping borders that's going to be done on low pressure as well and that little building there we're going to take care of all of it then we're going to get these cars out the driveway and start surface cleaning that we're going to show you a little bit on that too as well coming up guys again y'all uh Hang tight towards the end of the video. We got a lot more to show y'all. All right, guys, we're back doing some surface cleaning. Now, I have not cleaned inside of here just yet. I'm gonna show you why here. This is gonna be pretty much last. The reason is we knew we were surface cleaning. Some of this stuff would get splattered in here, perhaps, along these walls, and even on the back side of it. So, we're gonna kind of clean this last and then rinse it out clean the furniture rinse all this out to here whenever we get ready for that so right now we just surface cleaning we did our trim work so once we finish surface cleaning we can go directly to rinse and under rinse pressure is what we're going to do cleaning that in there with some hand brushes if need be so that's the reason why i structured it that way and guys sometimes you're going you're to want to do it a little different um oh that's an old one or i guess it's an old bike it's just look to be old and Man, that'd be a rough ride right there boss yeah that's not an old bike it's just a um a yard piece i guess it's cool though first time i've seen one of those so anyway y'all might do it different ways you might you know surface clean before you even start the house i just tend to do high to low you know it's just been my thing but even after surface cleaning you're going to have to come back and rinse the house either way so, you know, if you want to surface clean first before you do the house, I'm not going to beat you up over it. It's to each his own, but it's just the way we do it. I won't be mad at you, but, you know, to each his own on that. Surface clean, then wash the house, or vice versa. Now, if I were cleaning the soft washing this roof, I would do it first. And that would I would be really adamant about doing that roof first because you're going to wash all some of that stuff down anyway. So think about that as well. So we're gonna do our surface clean. We've got a big driveway to surface clean as well. I'm about to start doing my walk around on the pricing on this while we catch up with water supply because we was running two machines earlier. Again, I'm gonna walk around and go over the pricing if we were gonna clean the roof. If we had a soft washer, gutters, all that, we're gonna act like we have that, but we don't. But I would price it the same way. So. I'm gonna also price the house wash and the concrete work as well. So again, I'm gonna roll that all that into BillyDavisonVIP.com, the roof cleaning course on there. I think that's a really good place to put this this pricing on this. So I'm gonna be back to show some more work that we're doing right here, and then I'm gonna take a quick break from recording this and do the pricing walk around right now. So y'all hang tight. I'll be back shortly. All right, guys, so we are in the patio area. As I promised, I'll show you some of this. This can get complicated, to be honest with you. You can drag all this stuff out of here, which is fine if you want to do that. But I tend not to do it. I want to clean stuff, move it around, clean it in place, that sort of thing. So don't be afraid to come in here. Water hose, scrub brushes if you have to. Low pressure. There's a TV on the wall. There's a lot of fragiles and stuff like that. And what we're going to do is just clean in place. And then we're going to come in here, water, water hose and rinse. Now, another thing, if you got some of these patio areas, sometimes the water wants to 
pile up in them and not want to drain. Or you want to have a push broom on you, sweep this out. And it's okay to have some water in here that, that, that'll evaporate up, but you don't want to have dirty water in here. And that's the thing. So flush it out, keep the water running while you're brooming it, kind of float that trash out of here, that sort of thing. And once we clean this, we're going to start rinsing around, pushing this stuff away from the patio. I didn't want to rinse that concrete, push it all in here, and there's more stuff that we would pile up in here on us. So furniture the same way. If you're going to include the furniture in your house wash, that's fine too. By the way, we just did the walk around, the pricing, and as we speak now, it's in the course. So that's in the roof cleaning course on BillyDavisonVIP.com. There'll be a link in the description. So all that pricing information's in there as we speak. So this furniture, hand brush it, wipe it down, turn it over, flip it over. Last thing you want to do is being paid to clean something and there's a wasp's nest under there, a dirt diver's nest under here, you know, because you're going to turn, turn it over, flip it over and check it. So again, you're not going to use high pressure. You're not going to use a surface cleaner in here, that sort of thing. You want to come in here and clean it very carefully using low pressure, stuff like that. Dirt diver's nest getting these corners around these bars. So we're going to check that. We're going to check behind this TV as well. It's going to look back here. And guys, no, these TVs are not waterproof. There's no such thing as a waterproof TV. So if you get it wet, you're going to have to probably replace it more than likely. Apex, didn't you replace the TV one time? Well, actually, I got it wet. I didn't want to replace it. As soon as I got my trailer turned around, I was heading back to meet up with them and assess the damage. It dried out and it started working beautifully again. And that's oh, yeah. actually on the customer because he told me that there is a waterproof cover on it. It's completely waterproof. Oh, he had a cover on it. Well, yeah, well, that makes sense. That's oh, he had it covered. Yeah, he had oh, an okay. actual cover for yeah. it installed and I was doing some light rinsing around that area and, and somehow I got some in it of the water permeated that cover that was claimed to be waterproof but huh. the TV dried out and ended up working perfectly so he got lucky I got lucky on that well one. this TV right here definitely is not going to handle any water there's no covers or nothing like that I heard one person tell me they make outdoor TVs <laughs> <So>. <laughs> No, this is just a TV that they bought out of one of the big box stores and they hung it on the wall. So, it, you know, maybe it can handle a little bit on the, the screen, but we don't we don't want to do that. We're going to hand wipe that down with a damp cloth. So, guys, this is what you're doing. Remember, you're flipping these furniture over, lawn furniture. You need to be paid for it. We talk about that in the course that we just recorded. So, how much to charge for that. You'll go in there and see that and you know it's worth it because you need you don't want to do it for free for sure so you want to add that into your estimate with the customer as you see here we hand wiping this stuff down with a scrub brush that sort of thing so guys we're going to show you some surface cleaning here in a minute again if you like this video so far if it's been helpful please smash that like button don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell that uh, way well, you'll be notified the next time we upload a video or do a contest to give away something here on Billy Davidson VIP.com's YouTube channel. So we're going to be doing all of that here in the very near future here on our YouTube channel. So make sure you share this too as well. Maybe there's someone out there on your Facebook group that can get some benefits from it. Maybe not even necessarily competition. Just someone all the way on the other side of the country that, that might could use some of this information. So we're going to do some surface cleaning here in a minute. Then we're going to go grab some lunch. Once we get this job done, we're fighting some weather moving in. It's supposed to be some terrible weather here in Louisiana later tonight. So we want to try to get everything wrapped up, get the check in the bank, get some sandwiches in our stomach, get the equipment in the shop and call it a day. Guys, we'll be right back doing some service cleaning. I want to talk to you about that, something very specific on that that might could save you hundreds of dollars, a mistake, that is. So we'll be back here in a second. So guys, what I wanted to show you all with the trim work before you surface clean, we just cleaned the inside of this carport area. We actually washed the car too. And it is full of pollen. She doesn't drive often, so this car doesn't move. But nice to have it go ahead and clean just go ahead and wash it off for them 
small things sometimes are getting matter. So we surface cleaned, uh, well, we're gonna surface clean this driveway. I'm gonna show you some of that video as well. But what I like to do is trim out, since we've already cleaned this and we don't wanna splatter in here anymore, I wanna trim out three or four feet just with your wand, as you see here. That way, when you run that surface cleaner, you don't have to get super close to this edge and splatter back in here where we've already cleaned. So remember that whenever you're doing, right now, again, we're just using a J-Rod, kind of that tight fan on there. It's putting maybe four or 500 PSI out, pushing about four gallons a minute. And then when we get on the surface cleaner, we're gonna dial this thing up and run it probably about eight gallons per minute. That way we knock out this square footage on the concrete. And again, we measured all that square footage and put that in the pricing part of this on BillyDavisonVIP.com under the roof cleaning course. So that's where you can find out how to price residential houses. So we're gonna do some surface cleaning and we'll give y'all uh, some more videos of that here in a second. All right, guys, we're on our final step of how to wash a house how to pressure wash your house, start to finish. Obviously that word pressure wash is kind of not exactly what we do. We pressure wash in the concrete, but the house is more of a soft wash. But our final step, we're doing our surface cleaning and then we're gonna be out the door. And basically what I like to do is save this for last. Now we'll come back and rinse it as well. I'll show you some of that here in a minute. But as you see, some of this water starting to pile up. I know a lot of guys on YouTube say do the lowest area first. I, I don't quite agree with that. Yeah, this water is going to pile up a little bit, but our machines just cut right through any standing water. I like to go high to low. It just helps out with rinsing so much. And there again, if you do have some standing water, you want to clean under it. But if you can't get that water evacuated out of there, it's not that big of a deal. You can always double back the next day and take a blower or a broom because it's going to dry up to be a fine powder. And if you got to shove everything to one low area, we call that the dependent area. If it's being dependent in one area of the concrete, you know, do, do what you can. But don't spend all day trying to broom out this water. And all it's going to do is just flow right back. And like I said, a couple days you can come by and want to be there. Or you could just broom it up the next day when it dries out. And that's really not your fault. You can't control these people's drainage. But you can do what you can to make the job look decent. So we're going to service clean high to low. We'll make our way all the way out there to the road. Then we'll rinse it. Then we'll roll up and, and that'll be that. But I'm going to show you a couple things on rinsing that might could help you out. And a couple things else on the surface cleaning once we get down the driveway. So guys, what I got, I got two machines on my trailer. So I got Apex pressure washing or surface cleaning this right here. And the other gentleman's back here surface cleaning. So we're really knocking this driveway out really quickly so the amount of money we're making on this is just going to take about an hour because we're able to use utilize two surface cleaners two pressure washers i actually got a little bit of dawn dish liquid soap in my buffer tank kind of help loosen this up that way we don't have to pre-treat it and oftentimes by using that detergent in the buffer tank we don't have to post treat it either there's no lines or streaks so we'll see how it comes out after we surface clean it there may be a spot or two but as you see here, this is only about 30 or 40% power. But since I'm running two machines, I'm watching my water level. And it's still doing quite well with it. So we're going to show you all some rinsing techniques here in a short bit. All right, guys, we've got this surface cleaning. It literally took like 33 minutes to do it. And once you watch our pricing video that we put on our website under the roof cleaning course, You'll see how many square feet it is, and you can add it up how much you can make an hour surface cleaning. So right now we're just using an open hose, rinsing high to low. Like I said, there's going to be some areas that's going to be a little dependent, and I am just not going to sit out here for six hours trying to push this water out. I may swing by tomorrow or the next day with a blower and blow it out. Of course, I'm going to get it as good as I can, but we're not trying to cut ditches and dig ditches for these people. And... This is the way we're going to rinse from high to low. Now, I got both my machines paired together. They both run in about six or seven gallons per minute right now. So, out this hose, I'm probably putting at least 12 to 13 gallons per minute down. And it's just going to make a really quick rinsing project for us. 
Now, that hose right there, you don't want to let go of it because it would be like a loose cannon at that point. But as you see here, we're just pushing this off. And I still got a little bit of suds in there, kind of help pushing some of this dirty water off. And, we, of course, we don't have to recover this water because we're just pushing it down and then off to the side in the grass where it belongs. So that's one question I get, that you have to recover the water. And no, you don't, so long as you can get it off the concrete, not in the ditch. So, so that's about wrapped up for this. I hope y'all like this video, how to wash a house start to finish. If y'all um, leave a comment, got any questions, I'll be answering them in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when we upload another video. Well, guys, we hope to see y'all in the next video.